apologize for not knowing no, the exact. No, that's all right. I mean, we can't know everything. I, I don't think so, but I do know this. Look at this. Let's talk about commandment. Right. This is Hebrews 5, 8, talking about Jesus. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. If there is a command that Jesus says that you have to do that is involved in salvation, then you have to do that in order to have eternal salvation. And see, one of the things that Jesus actually said that is essential for you and for me to do is Mark 16, verse 16. That's what He sent His apostles out to do is to baptize people so that they could be saved. Here we go. He said unto them in Mark 16, 15, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Now, if a person doesn't believe, you know he's not going to be baptized, so you don't have to have Jesus saying, well, if he doesn't believe and isn't baptized. If he doesn't believe, he's not going to be baptized. Right. So what he but said you know, is... Hey, let me, let, me, okay. let me mention this, though. Okay. You brought up a good point. Okay. And, I, and I, this happens a lot. Well, I don't know if it happens in, in the denomination that you're in yourself, but I know it happens in different churches, and that is that people sometimes will... Uh, I'll ask you if you've had this case. Okay. I've seen some people make, an, make a profession of faith or, oh. or you know, repent of the sin okay. and, and be baptized and go, then still go back to the world. Okay. Now, my question is, you know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says that with, if they had continued with us, if they were among of us, they would have continued with us. I'm sure you know the scripture. I do, but, but that verse isn't actually teaching that everybody who left was never with us. Right. Because here's a man right here in Acts chapter 8. His name is Simon. I bet you remember him. Oh, yeah. He you wanted don't... to buy. Now, yeah. Simon was baptized. You, you bring up a good point there. Here's a man, just like you said. Simon himself believed, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip. Okay? He believes, but remember, he's a sorcerer. Right. right. He's been letting it out that he's some great man. Well, when Simon saw that through the laying on the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, look what he did. He went right back to his old ways, didn't he? Right. So instead of baptizing him again, here's what they said. Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought the gift of God would be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in the matter, for thy heart is not right with in the sight of God. But they didn't tell him, You know what, Simon? You were never really with us. They just said, now your heart is not right. But what are you going to do? Repent, therefore of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart might be forgiven thee. And then he asked Simon to pray for me. So, yes, you're right, sir. Sometimes people do go back. As a matter of fact, guess what? Since I was baptized, I believe that Jesus Christ was the resurrected Lord. I determined to repent of Johnny being king of my life and let him be Lord of my life. And then I was baptized... Just exactly like this Bible says right this this verse says right here, I wanted the old body to be cut off. I believed that God would do that right here in baptism, just like he said. So I was buried. When I was buried believing that, God raised me from the dead just like he raised Jesus. And you know what? I have sinned since then. As a matter of fact, it was a pretty good while before I came strong became strong enough through study and constant prayer to actually get to the point where I wasn't falling back. But that doesn't mean that I wasn't changed here. Right. And so, you see, what we're saying is... Well, the Bible says, was it First John 1, that he that saith not he has no sin... That's right. He's a liar and the truth is not in him. First John chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. You're exactly right. Well, sir, see, the, the thing only... Really, the thing that we're differing on tonight is that Everybody that you've been associated with sounds like told you that baptism was simply a command and that it wasn't essential. No, I, I do believe, well, I believe it's essential. Well, I believe it's a part of, uh, you know, I guess you could say, uh, I see what you're saying. You're saying the difference is without, without baptism, there is no cleansing of the sin. I'm saying your body, you, the... the uh, the sins of the flesh, putting off the body of the sins of the flesh right. does not take place unless God does it right here. Right. And see, most people go around saying, well, you know, it's a work of man. Well, can I deal with that right quick? Sure. 
Sure. You remember Matthew 21, 25? John was baptizing everybody? Right. The baptism of John, they said. Well, Jesus said, the baptism of John, whence was it? From heaven or men? They reasoned among themselves, saying, if we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, why didn't you believe him? Well, where was John's baptism from? Heaven or men? From heaven. It's, it, it, you're exactly right. It is actually from heaven, and it's not a work of man. Sir, when you're baptized, you're not doing the work. Right. You know, baptism actually is a command that is passive. You're passive in it. You don't do it. It says, be baptized. When I tell you, when somebody tells you to be baptized, they're not telling you that you baptize yourself. It means that you have to be baptized. You have to be assisted. You're passive. You're not doing it. You're being passive in it being done to you. And it is a work that God does. Could we look, uh, sir, would it make a difference if I actually went to this Greek word and we found out if this Greek word is actually translated with the English word work? So see, if it is translated with the English word work in other places, then this could actually read the work of God. Oh, yeah. You, do you already believe that? Yeah. Let me just for our listeners' sake, let's see if we can uh, keep the same, uh, the same size uh, uh, screen up. I'm not always that familiar with this particular uh, program that I'm using here. Hey, can I ask you a quick okay, question? Okay, go ahead. I'm not taking up too much of your no, time. No, no, sir. You know what? Uh, what we're actually doing, sir, is if you think about it, are we not having a Bible study right here on, on television? Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, a lot of times people, what do they call this? Uh, well, i tell you what. I'll just tell you like this. I heard the guy you were talking to earlier. And what people's problem is, uh, they think just because they disagree with you, they don't, they, they want, they don't want to call and do a, and do a you know, a earnest debate. They really just want to call and try to blast people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're talking about the people who call me up a lot? Uh, well, you know, in general, I mean, either, you know, if, if you really got, to me, if you got the Spirit of God in you, you ought to be able to talk to somebody whether you agree with them or not and do it in the right spirit. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. And, sir, you know mm -hmm. what most people actually say about what we're doing is they say, well, y'all are arguing the Scripture. But you know what? Why? Me and you ain't arguing. We're not arguing. As a matter of fact, um, I'm trying to figure out how to get this big. I tell you what. I tell you what. A lot of people's problems are is they don't they they don't believe in keeping an open mind to the scriptures. Well, you know what? What one of the things I was saying a while ago too is is that one thing that happens is is that a lot of people. There's the one I was looking for. A lot of people actually don't uh, don't really not just keep their mind open, they're not open to seeing more Scripture. Right. Now there, to me, is uh, what we've done tonight. We've gone through, you know, when, when we had a, like a kind of point where we weren't on the same page, oh, yeah. we went to the Scripture. Now right here, I have an interlinear up here, and yeah, it okay. actually has each one of those Greek words. It says here is the operation of God, and it's right here, the Greek word is energia. Well, that sounds like energy, doesn't it? And there it is right there. It is uh, operation, strong, effectual, working. Well, let me see now if I can find uh, everywhere that is listed. I say I'm not used to using this. Um, um, huh. I'm not used to using this actual program. Right. I was going to find. Let me just see here just a minute. Uh, I'm real... You're going to find where else in the Bible it should. I'm trying. That's right. And I just, uh, this is a program that I use a lot in my, you know, my own study, but I'm not as, as uh, I'm not as um, um, comfortable with it as I need to be. Right. So I'm just going to have to, hmm. Well, let's see just, here. Just think you used to have to look all this up. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> Well, I, I'm still, I'm not, um, I'm not, here's, a, no, I'm not going to be able to do it. This other program that I have right here, it, I can do it right here, no problem, but the thing is, you can't see it. Right. Can you see that? I can see it, I can't read it. Okay. Um, but you know, the, the bottom line is, and it's one thing that I am in agreement on with you, without a doubt, is that I, you know, people take, I think, uh, and I, 
I will agree with you that a lot of Baptists they take they take the baptism lightly instead of um, really you know you you made out you made a probably one of the better points on it there a minute ago that it is a work of God. Okay. Well, I appreciate you saying that because that's to me that is uh, that's where everybody is actually uh, they 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 actually don't take it. Right here, what I've done is I've gone to every single verse in the New Testament that uh, has the word, that word in it, work or operation. Now, a while ago, we saw it as, as uh, operation, but here it is translated work. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. Well, we just established that baptism isn't a work that we actually do. Right. I think we just established that baptism is a work that God does, and you know what? Now, when I see it like that, all of a sudden, all these people who says, "Well, you know, you know, uh, it, it can't be baptism. We we can't be a part of salvation because it's a work." Well, is it a work? Is it a work of man, or is it in fact a work of God? And we just demonstrated here is the word energia. It means work, but here it's translated operation. Well, what operation takes place? It is the cutting off of the sins of the flesh. Well, sir. Tell you what, let's do. I have a feeling that there are people that are just wishing that you would get off because they don't like the direction that we're going <laughs> with this because you know what? We've actually gotten closer together tonight. Right. And I appreciate your spirit. All right, brother. All right. Have Thanks for night. calling. All right. You're on What's the Bible Say? Yes. Uh, brother Johnny, uh, I just the first time I've talked to you. Okay. But you've... Uh, had brought up two or three uh, 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 scriptures uh, that uh, you and the other guy was talking about, and uh, one of them, okay, now I believe 100% you have to be baptized. Okay. But uh, when you was baptized, how was you baptized? Was you baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, or was you baptized in Jesus' name? Okay, I was baptized in the name of the Lord. Now, what, what does that mean? Well, uh, the reason I was asking, because uh, 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 I talked to Brother James a couple of times, and uh, he said you didn't have to use a name. And uh, where, like in Acts 2.38, Peter said to repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Okay. Then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay. Okay, and... Well, can I ask you, sir, now when we're talking, uh, when I say I was baptized in the name of the Lord, do you agree that there is such thing as a Godhead right here? Yes. Okay, what is the Godhead? No, wait a minute, I, I may, may have uh, misunderstood you. I said, do you believe there is a Godhead? In him, that is in Jesus, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. What, what is the Godhead? I believe, I believe that uh, Jesus was God made manifest. Okay, but I say, what is the Godhead? I'm not sure on that. Okay. Well, sir, that's another study. That's one that sounds like we need to have on this broadcast is what is the Godhead? Yeah. Because in Jesus is the fullness of something that a lot of people don't understand. Yeah. Okay, I appreciate you calling. Okay, all oh, right. I have one more okay. question. Okay, all right. Let's go back to baptism. Okay, back to baptism. Mm hmm Okay, well, uh, the reason I, I was bringing up uh, repent and be baptized everyone you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin, because in Matthew 16 and 18, uh, Peter, he was an apostle. And you said something a while ago about apostolic. Uh, 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 mm -hmm. believers. Well, I'm an apostolic believer. Well, what is an apostolic believer? Is that a denomination? It, well, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, but uh, they uh, are supposed to be apostle, like like the apostles. Okay. Now, so well, let's let, let me ask you this. Let's let's do a little testing on the apostles. Okay. Okay. If if you're an ap apostolic, is that is that a way to say it too? Apostolic. Yeah. All right, is, do apostolics follow what the Apostle Paul said about women preachers? Yes. 
Okay, right here. I suffer not a woman to teach, nor usurp, usurp authority over a man, but to be in silence. Can a woman teach over a man or preach over a man? No. Okay. Now, you're doing, sir, I say you're doing pretty good as far as, as following the apostolic doctrine. Uh -huh. But what about, let's, let's move to another one. In 1 Corinthians 14, now isn't this really what we're supposed to do? We're supposed to uh, try every spirit? Yes, we're oh, supposed to. Okay. In, in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 26 now, let's see how we do here. How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you has a psalm or a doctrine or a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation, let all things be done to edi unto edifying. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. If there, if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak unto himself and to God. In the apostolic church, do you all... Uh, allow everybody to speak in tongues all at the same time or do you always speak one at a time and then let someone interpret? Well, now, they, they, I've been to uh, several uh, different apostolic, uh, but in the apostolic that I go to, uh, I believe if they speak in tongues, I believe that they, uh, it should be edified because... Uh, Wait a minute, it says it should be interpreted. Uh, interpreted, yeah. yeah. And, okay. That way, uh, 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 and if they, if they, uh, uh, that way, if you got an interpreter there, you know what they're saying, whether he is of God or not. Okay. Now, you know what, sir? Now, I, I'm just, I, I'm, this what you just told me is pretty incredible because, you know, have you ever watched our broadcast before? Yes, sir. Uh, I get Watch around. It every Thursday night. Okay. So what about Sunday night? I know. Uh, okay. I don't get a chance on Sunday night, but uh, I am going to start watching it. Okay, I usually come on on Sunday night. And, sir, I get around. Okay. I, I, I've been, I've taught here. I've taught in the Pacific. I've been in uh, places like Australia, New Zealand, tried to, you know, tried to get around. And I've been into the Apostolic, Pentecostal, United Pentecostal, Church of God, Full Gospel. Uh -huh. and, and do you know, sir, now, now I'm saying this is incredible what you're telling me tonight. I have never seen a group that is associated with the apostolic who actually would limit themselves, would refrain from everybody speaking in tongues if they believe the Holy Spirit came upon them. Most of the time they tell me, well, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you know, you, you just don't know what you're going to do. And I see a, a, a disobedience on a regular basis of this passage right here. But you're telling us tonight that the apostolic church you're in, that they always speak one at a time, and that someone always interprets the unknown tongue. Yes. Okay. Well, sir, that is very... Uh, do you mind telling us which apostolic church that is tonight? Well, uh, like I say, I go to uh, plenty of them, uh, but the, uh, this one here was a black church. Okay. And, uh, of course, I'm a white man. Okay. And it used to be Bishop Giles, but he's dead and gone now. Okay. So, and, you well, know, he used to be on Blue Creek. Now, are you saying you don't go anymore? I don't go to that church no more, no. Okay, but the one you go to now, do they obey this? Uh, no, they don't. Okay, now, sir, you know I, I wouldn't hurt your feelings, and I would not uh, I, I would not cause us to have problems for anything in the world. I can already tell that I like you. Uh -huh. But, sir, that's not an apostolic church because an apostolic church... If, if there was such a thing in the New Testament, I never heard them calling themselves apostolic in the New Testament. They, they actually glorified Jesus. But if there was a church that followed the apostles' doctrine in Acts 2.42, they would be following what the Apostle Paul said here. Right. So, sir, I'm, I'm, worried. I'm worried about your spiritual welfare because it seems like these people have a spirit of a disobedience. Uh, that's, that's the way I've been feeling. That's the reason I've uh, been looking around for another apostolic church. Okay. And, well, uh, can, I, can, I, can I encourage you this direction? Now, sir, you and I agree on this business about following the apostles' doctrine. Yes. Sir. Okay? Do you get that from Acts 2, verse 42? Here it is right here. Is this the verse that you're using right here? And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and breaking bread. That's right after they were baptized in the name of, uh, uh, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for uh -huh. remission of your sins. That's 38, 42. Uh -huh. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, sir. Now, sir, we continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine 
but the apostles were members of the church of Christ. Yes. Not the apostolic. Because see, that gives honor to the apostles rather than to whom? If, if but the, the uh, God uh, uh, was one, well, Jesus was one that told Peter does this uh, in uh, Matthew uh, 16, 18. Yes, sir. I say unto thee, thou, uh, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Okay. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'm right here. That's it. The, he said, who's, who's he going to build? The apostolic church or no, Jesus it, church? But Peter was an apostle, so uh, we call it the apostolic uh, faith because uh, we are supposed to be following the apostles, which a whole lot of the apostolic faith believers are the one that calls themselves apostolic is not uh, fully apostolic. Well, here's the thing. If the apostles didn't call it the apostolic church, why would you? They called it, look here, the churches of Christ. Right. Now, that's an apostle, and he said that the church, uh, Matthew was an apostle, and he said, upon this rock, Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church, not the apostles' church, right. Jesus' church. Well, wouldn't Jesus' church be called the church of Jesus, the church of Christ? Right. And see, what, what the apostolics have done is because we follow the apostolic doctrine, but when you really get down to it, sir, aren't we following the commandments of Jesus? Uh, well, as far as I've followed y'all along, I do. Okay. Oh, except for uh, I called him one night, and Brother James said he didn't believe in in uh, baptizing in the name of Jesus. He said uh, uh, that he uh, he uh, didn't believe he had to use a name. Okay. Well, uh, uh, I, I think that there's going to be a difference when James said that. There's not a difference between me and James. There's a difference between the way you're, you, you're saying use his name. Yeah. I believe that when I do something because Jesus said it, uh -huh. I have done it in his name or by his authority. By his authority. That's right. right. Now here's that's, that's the way he said it. Okay. And, uh, and you know, because he said that when he uh, baptized people, said he does it by the authority Okay. Jesus. So no. didn't, and isn't that what Apostle Matthew told us that Jesus said in Matthew uh, 28, 18, God hath given me authority or power in all power in heaven and in earth. Yes. That's the word authority. Right. God has given his son all authority in heaven and in earth. And when you do something in his name, that means by his authority. I would never baptize somebody in my name. Uh-huh. But when I teach them from Jesus' word, they know when I baptize them, it's by Jesus' authority or in his name. Yes, but I believe I would rather for you to say in the name of Jesus when I go under. Okay. I mean, you know, I well, we that. may uh, have opinions different from that, but I, I'm sort of, I follow along with you on, uh, on a whole lot of the stuff you've been talking about. Okay. And uh, in fact, I, I may I get to get to come to your church and uh, get to talk to you in person. Okay, can I say this, sir? I, I, we just have to do one thing. When we speak, we do have to speak like the Bible speaks. Whose church is it? It's Christ. Okay, when you come and visit with me, sir, uh -huh. I will actually be assembled with Christ's church. And I just can't let you say it would be mine because you know what? I didn't die for anything. Yeah, well, okay. Okay, I, see, I we, we just, that. okay. okay. You caught me there, okay. No, I, I wasn't trying to, though, sir. I was just, you know, Peter said, if any man speak, let him speak as the word of God. Yeah. So that's you. what we, and sir, I, I tell you, I, I'm looking forward to meeting you. Okay. Okay, thanks for calling tonight. Uh-huh, bye-bye. All right, friends, we're having great discussion. I'd like for somebody to call in, and let's go back to our text tonight. You know what the Bible say? Yes, caller? All right, we may have lost that caller. You go ahead and call back in. The lines are open again. Now, friends, we had a good long discussion on two different topics. And in those two different topics, we kept introducing the Word of God. You know, I wouldn't tell you anything on my own word because, you know, when it gets down to it, I'm going to pass right from this earth and you'll probably never remember. People never remember that I lived here unless they can find some kind of stone somewhere that says I did. But Jesus Christ's word, the Bible says, it will judge you in the last days, John 12, 48. 
we need to make sure that we're following along with Jesus' words. So tonight, this is what we're actually saying. We're saying that this information is vital to you understanding. Now, why am I on this in the first place? Here's why I'm on this. It's because we have people everywhere who, like Buck Wardell, who is saying that baptism is an identity work that is like the circumcision, the believer's real, real it's a place where believers really identify with Christ. In other words, they say baptism is a picture of salvation. It is a picture, it pictures past salvation. And you know what, friends? The problem with that is it's just false, not in the Bible. Buck Wardell can't prove that. And here tonight, I actually have from Buck Wardell's own website, you know, we're actually missing part of our, I may have, it, have too much of it. I'm going to uh, play something that he said as long as we have the words up here. And I'm not for sure that you can read that. I may have to go and uh, build this into two different, um, oh, I can see. There's no wonder. That's way too small. All right, let's go, um, let's look at it now. Let me, uh, it's going to take me two pages to get all that in there. I've actually typed what Buck Wardell said in this particular clip that, that uh, we're going to listen to. And I want you to listen to how he preached in, on his website, how he actually preached what Colossians 2.12 is saying. Now, friends, that's why I'm doing this tonight. Now, you tell me tonight, after we get through with Buck Wardell, uh, his statement, you tell me if, um, if this is what you were taught. Now, the only thing I've got to do is I've got to go in here and, and fix this so I can get it to play uh, during the slideshow. Hold on. All right, let me just get it down here. All right, we're ready to go. Listen to this clip. All right, see what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop just a minute. We got another phone call. You're on what's the Bible say? Uh, yeah. John. Yes. Uh, in the Bible, doesn't it give the uh, command to say, "Go ye into the world and teach the gospel, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost"? Yes, it does. Well, exactly. What What is that name? Okay, now, sir, you, do you remember that I asked the caller, what is the Godhead? You remember that? When, when, I, when we first started that call, I said, what is the Godhead? Here it is, Colossians 2, verse 9. I asked, what is the Godhead? And in the apostolic church, they don't really teach what is the Godhead. The Godhead is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But, isn't it the case that the Bible says that the fullness of the Godhead is where? In Jesus. Christ. That's right. When you mention Jesus' name, you have mentioned the Godhead. You have mentioned all the authority that there is. In other words, I don't really believe that you have to say the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in order to include them in what you've done. Because in Jesus' name, it's just like when a, 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 an officer of the law comes in and he knocks on your door and he says, open up in the name of the law. Well, who is the law? It's the one doing the knock. Well, it's the sheriff, that's right. And it's also the county. When the sheriff, the sheriff is not the one that's going to actually arraign you, is he? The judge will arraign you. The county will prosecute you. Well, why didn't he say open up in the name of the sheriff, open up in the name of the county, open up in the name of the prosecutor. Because when he says open up in the name of the law, he's actually said what represents all of them. Yes, sir. And so, sir, I, I'm saying you probably already have that in your mind, but in the apostolic church, they don't. Well, I, I understand that in the, I, I, you know, the apostolic church, that faith is... Jesus only. I yes. mean, without any father, son, or holy. I mean, you know, without the other two names included. Well, now, this gentleman that called a minute ago, he just said that he didn't totally understand what the Godhead is, so I didn't, I didn't uh, basically make it out uh, what you just said. Now, but... but Because I have a good friend, you know, that a uh, friend that is in the uh, apostolic faith. Okay. And he, 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 he will not... Um, uh, you know, confirm to the thoughts that there is the Father. Okay. Jesus came from the Father. Okay, well, sir, I, I agree with you, and we've had lessons on the uh, Godhead, but tonight, what, I, what I'd really like to do 
is I would like for you to weigh in on what we've discussed here uh, in this passage. How, how so did you say feel that... about what actually came out just a minute ago when we were having this discussion? Uh, when we were having this discussion about what the Bible says about uh, baptism being a work of God and not a work of man. What church are you in? Uh, the, the, the work of God, absolutely it's the work of God. Man, man cannot do what God does. Oh, so, so, sir, you can only obey what God instructions is. Okay, so you and I are in agreement that when you're baptized, that's where the putting off of the body of sins takes place, the circumcision made without hands, where you end up being a new creature. It takes place so in... That is the completion of salvation. It's when you enter into the water, as Christ said. Okay, sir, are you a member of the Church of Christ? No, but I believe the way the Church of Christ does. Okay, you know what, sir? There, there is no other way. I, I appreciate you saying that. What what we're really saying then is together, you and I actually believe what the Bible says. Is it actually, uh, yes, John, okay. you're you closer than... There is no denomination that will agree with what you say and agree with it truthfully because okay. denomination is not, not the path that you'll, you present on television. Okay. Well, sir, we don't know each other, but I'm sure wanting to know you. I I'm really looking forward to you giving me the opportunity to meet you. You know where I am? Are, are you a person in Virginia or North Carolina? Can I ask you that? Yes, John, I've actually attended your church. Okay. Uh, I'm, I mean, excuse me, not, uh, I'll call it myself. Yeah. Your church, but the church. The Church of Christ. The church okay. Of okay. Well, um, not recognizing your voice, you don't have to tell me your name, but I, I am appreciating you tonight because persons who will believe what the Bible said are few and far between. And I appreciate you tonight. Come back and, and uh, uh, visit with us again. Okay, thank All right. you, sir. All right, thanks for calling tonight. All right, friends, you want to watch the Bible say? Yeah, uh, Johnny. Yes, sir. Uh, Matthew chapter 23, 8, 9, and 10. Verse 8, 9, and 10. Uh huh. In verse 9. Did you look at that and read it? Okay, now are we going to get off of our point? No, we're talking about the Godhead. Oh, no. Sir, this actually, I was, um, I was being um, courteous with the first man that called. But, you know, I'm wondering tonight if maybe the Lord would rather us stay right here because it seems like that somebody's really trying to get us off of this. Well, I'm not just talking about Father. You know the name of the Yeah, no, sir, I just said I'm not going to go into the Godhead tonight. Yeah. Because, look, you can tell what my discussion is. I know it. And I was being courteous with the man that called in the first time. I'm, I try to be courteous, but, you know, uh, I only have 30 minutes left. I'm sorry I called. Thank okay. You. All right, thanks for calling. All right. Uh, you know, sometimes, uh, folks, it's just... It is difficult for us to stay where we, get, where we are, but, you know, one of the things that we really need to discuss tonight is we need to discuss this business about whether or not baptism is actually a work of God or a work of man. Now, I'm going to let you listen to Mr. Wardell, and this is why people believe that baptism isn't essential, is not essential. Until he transforms it. So to say that we're dead and buried means I'm done with that, okay? Here's the whole point of this point. To say that you're dead and buried means that you're saying, hey, I'm done with that. And that is such an essential part of our identity in Christ. When we get baptized, what we're saying is, hey, I'm going public with this thing, and I don't care who knows. I'm done with that old life. I'm done with that way of living. I am finished with all of that, and I am ready to announce that reality to the world. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. And that point of identification that we have been buried with Christ, that is a picture of finality. Now, guys, it's important. I need to give you a little theology this it. morning. So to say that we're dead and buried means I'm done with that. Okay? Here's the whole... All right. For some reason, my, my voice stopped. He goes on to say, now I need to give you a little theology this morning. Just as the act of physical circumcision did not change anyone's heart, God had to get on to them about that over and over again. In a similar way, the waters of baptism of the day don't save anybody, right? Water baptism, this is, this is Mr. Wardell, water baptism does not put us into Christ Jesus. We are not saved by H2O. 
what are we saved by? Grace through faith in the finished work of Christ. In fact, when we place our faith in Christ and we're born again, 1 Corinthians 12, 13 states very clearly that we're born of the Spirit, he goes on to say. The moment you get saved, this is your conversion. You're baptized. You are identified with Christ. I think I have it upon the screen. Is Paul talking about water baptism in this verse? No, he's not. Notice, he is describing the activity of the Spirit in our heart. Look at it. So this is a baptism by the Spirit. This is a baptism by the Spirit, not a baptism of the pastor or another Christian. This is something that the Holy Spirit does in your heart. What, someone might say, what is the purpose of water baptism? Now the thing about it is, Mr. Waddell is actually in Colossians 2, verse 12. He's teaching out of Colossians 2, verse 12. You know what's about to say? Uh, yeah, I noticed he left out uh, a verse that talks about being born of water and the Spirit. That's and he also put in there that it was public. I don't remember the eunuch being in a public place. In fact, he was going through a place that uh, he was traveling through. And there was no indication he knew anybody there. And as you pointed out earlier, the jailer, it was midnight and it was his own house. So there doesn't seem to be any public in that instance either. I'd like you to comment on those. Uh, okay. That's, that's uh, you know, Mr. Wardell said that it was a public display, a public a proclamation. Well, in Acts chapter 8, the Bible is actually uh, clear that the Ethiopian eunuch and Philip were out in the middle of nowhere, and he said they were on their way. They came to a certain water, and the eunuch said, here's water, here's water, what to hinder me to be baptized. Well, who's he proclaiming to? That's exactly right. And as the caller said, the, the Philippian jailer at midnight, who did he proclaim to? You see, the fact of the matter is there's no scripture that says anything of this nature about baptism. Baptism is not a public proclamation. It is not a picture of something that has already taken place. And this doesn't talk about the Spirit doing anything to you in, in the sense that Mr. Waddell was saying. Here, the Bible says clearly. Let me just give you a... Let's, let's just get another scripture here if I can. Notice this, Romans chapter 6. Now, y'all... Romans chapter 6 is a verse that is used, I'm fixing to show in just a minute, the Liberty University, and when they baptize people, they use this verse all the time. Therefore we are buried with Him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. Let me just go to that clip. Listen to this clip. This morning Dr. Kanner was admonishing us as a church to stay true to the foundations that the gospel has laid out through Jesus Christ. And one of those commandments is that when we've accepted Jesus Christ, our personal Savior, that we follow the Lord in baptism. And tonight we have two gentlemen that I have the privilege of baptizing. Listen to what he says. This is Jonathan Williams. Little kid. Jonathan, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Because you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, it's my privilege to baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Here it comes. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in newness of life. Now, the thing is, this man Buried said in the of that he was already a brother. He had already received Jesus as his personal Savior, and he was simply baptizing him as something else. He actually quoted here. He said, Buried uh, with him in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in newness of life. Now, I want you to notice this, friends. If you actually read this passage... It actually says that the planting is actually connected with the resurrection. If you have not been planted together in the likeness of his death, well, what is the likeness of his death? Baptism. That's just exactly what they said right there at Liberty, ba Liberty University. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness, uh, raised to walk in use of life. I'm sorry. Walk in use of life, 
buried in the likeness of his death. Here it is. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in use of life. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in use of life. Well, he said, but the thing is, see, he said the, that this young fellow was already saved. He was already a brother in Christ. He had already received Jesus as his personal Savior. Buried with him in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in use of life. You see, the New Testament says, For if you have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Well, what if you haven't been buried? What if you haven't been planted in the likeness of his death? Well, you won't be in the likeness of his resurrection. You see, this verse again demonstrates that baptism is a part of the plan of salvation. It is God's way of finding out your willingness to be obedient uh, obedient faith in Him. Well, somebody says, it's a work of man. Oh, is it? Where did baptism come from? Please tell me. Is baptism a work of man? The baptism of John. Whence was it? From heaven or men? Well, if John's baptism was from heaven, where in the world did Jesus' baptism come from? You see, baptism is something that is not from man. It is from God. And when you are baptized, my friends, look at this. The Bible says that when you're baptized, that the, the thing that happens, the putting off of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, is an operation that God does. And you must believe in it in order to be raised to walk in newness of life. You know, I don't know where anyone ever came up with this idea that baptism is a work of man in the first place. When I was baptized, you think I boasted about what God did, the operation that God can you imagine me taking credit for what I was baptized, folks? When I was baptized, look, look you know what? I, I, was, I, I did something there. I, I, I'm, look at me. Do you think I boasted about an operation that God did? Why, that was the most submissive thing that I ever did when I believed that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead and I understood that in order to have my body of sins of flesh cut off, the circumcision that is made without hands, without men's hands, this is nothing that a man has to do. It's nothing that involves a man other than a man assisted me in, in the burial part and I actually believed I had faith in the operation that God was doing and this word operation we showed a while ago is the Greek word energia and it is translated work. Here it's translated right here. Not by energia, uh, our operations of righteousness, works of righteousness which we have done, no sir. Baptism is not a work of righteousness that a man has done. Baptism is a work of God. It originated in heaven just like John the Baptist's baptism. Uh, when Jesus asked this question, what do you think he was saying? John's baptism was from heaven. And they didn't want to answer because they knew it was from heaven and they knew they hadn't been obedient to heaven. And so tonight we know that Jesus' baptism is also from heaven and it isn't a work that I do. It is a work that God does upon me and I trust in Him doing that work and as a result of my trust, that's when I'm raised with Him through faith in His work, not faith in my work. Friends, I just don't know where this idea ever came from that baptism is some work of man. It's not a work of man. This is an amazing act that takes place in God's mind. God's the one who accomplished it, not by works of righteousness which we have done. Oh no. But according to His mercy He saved us. Well how was that? By the washing of regeneration. Friends, do you know what the word regeneration means? Regeneration is a form of the word born. When the Bible says in John 3 verse 5, we're born of water and the Spirit. Well, there's a washing of birth and a renewing of the Holy Ghost. You see, this is something that takes place simultaneously. When a person goes through the washing of the new birth and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, that is when God in His mercy saves you. Well, how does it happen? In other words, can you be a little bit clearer, please? Well, sure we can. How is it that this, this, uh, this happening in water, born of water, washing of regeneration, how does all this work, sir? Well, you know what? Here's how it works. 
there is a process by which you have the old body cut off just like the Jews symbolized the cutting off of a fleshly heart when they circumcised their little children. But you see, the, no, the New Testament nowhere says baptism is a symbol. Now, in the Old Testament, circumcision was. It was a physical cutting away of flesh, but it was supposed to symbolize what the Jews did before God, that is, cutting off the flesh of the heart. You see that in Deuteronomy chapter 9 and verse 10. Deuteronomy 9 and Deuteronomy 10. God was always upset with them because they hadn't circumcised their heart. But the New Testament never says that baptism is actually something of, of that nature in, in the way that the Jews did it. Baptism is, in fact, the place where we have the old body of sins cut off. Now, so can you read this? Look at this, folks. In whom also you were circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. A circumcision. What is a circumcision? It is a putting off of the body of the sins of flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Circumcision is when something is cut off. Well, in this case, it is the body of the sins of the flesh. Well, how does that happen? You were buried with Him in baptism, and in this baptism also you were raised with Him. Now, wh why is it that I'm raised as a new creature? Because right down here He says raised just like Jesus was raised. How is I'm raised a new creature? Because... I was risen with him through faith in the operation or faith of the operation of God. I actually trusted that God was working on me right here, cutting off the body of the sins of the flesh. And when I w allowed God to do that work on me, I then came up a totally new creature, risen with him through faith of the working of God. Well, let's look at it again now that we have it in mind. In Romans chapter 6, Therefore we are buried with Him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. You see, God was able with His great power to raise Jesus up from the dead. Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Why should we walk in newness? What, what are you talking about? Walking in newness of life. Well, when you were buried with Christ, there was a work that God did on you in taking off your old body of the sins of the flesh. And so see, now you are able to be a new person. You're walking in newness of life. How did it happen? For if we have been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall also be in the likeness of His resurrection. Well, let me ask you this. What if you haven't been planted together in the likeness of His death? Well, you won't be in the likeness of His resurrection. You see these people who say that baptism isn't necessary? It isn't essential to salvation? Well, let me ask you this. Is it essential to salvation to have your old body of the sins of the flesh cut off? Why, yes, it is. Well, where does that happen? Well, the Baptists say it's when you receive Jesus as your personal Savior. Would you please give me that scripture? Someone give me the scripture where it says that, that, that that's the case, that when you receive Jesus as your personal Savior. See, that's not even in the Bible. All this business that they say, you know, it doesn't bother a person at all to say this. Let's go through this again. This morning, Dr. Cantor was admonishing us as a church to stay true to the foundations that the gospel has laid out through Jesus Christ. Stay true to the foundations of the gospel as laid out in Jesus Christ. Dr. Cantor, who's supposed to be having a debate with me, but uh, when, when the night was we were going to have the discussion, he did not respond to his phone. One of those commandments is that when we've accepted Jesus Christ, our personal Savior, that we follow the Lord in baptism. Now, where is that commandment? One of those commandments is when we receive Jesus, our personal Savior, we follow Jesus in uh, believer's baptism. Where's that? I never read that. That's something he just made up. Tonight we have two gentlemen that I have the privilege of baptizing. This is Jonathan Williams. Jonathan, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Uh, Dr. Cantor, would you mind telling us, or somebody from Liberty University, one of the scholars, would you tell us where it says that when you receive Jesus as your personal Savior, that you're saved? And then 
you be baptized to identify Buck Waldell, you can, one of your people could call in and you could tell us where it says that after you've been saved, then you identify public identification through baptism. See, that's not in the Bible, y'all. That has nothing to do with what the Bible says. Now, you know, someone tonight may say, well, you know, Johnny, uh, it, it seems to me that you're speaking about liberty tonight and it may be in, in connection with the fact that uh, Jerry Falwell has passed and you want to get in there. Friends, I've been involved with liberty since April 8th of 2006, as a matter of fact. Here's one of the students at Liberty that we were trying to get to express to us some of this doctrine that they're, uh, that they're putting out. Now this particular, and I'm still pushing this, this particular email was from Matthew Copeland who actually is on the staff. He's a student, but he's a staff student, if you can say it. And he actually wrote to the, the uh, a debate captain at Liberty University. Now friends, uh, Brett O'Donnell, if you watched the debates the other night, they are actually telling about liberty when they were talking about Jerry Falwell dying. They talked about the fact that one of the speechwriters for one of the candidates was actually a Liberty graduate. Uh, he was one of the Liberty University graduates. Uh, I believe that the governor of uh, Virginia was actually tutored in debate before his debate by Brett O'Donnell or the uh, Liberty debate team. And here is a letter that Matthew Copeland is writing to Brett O'Donnell about the proposed discussion that we were going to have. I'm writing, sir. This is to Brett O'Donnell. The debate captain of Liberty University, concerning the brother that a certain Church of Christ pastor, concerning the bother, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to be a bother, that a bother that a certain Church of Christ pastor has been to us both. Let me explain. I'm from Martinsville, Virginia, as you might remember. There's a particular Church of Christ there who has a couple of pastors who want to have a debate with the team at Liberty University. I'm glad, sir, that you have not allowed that to happen. Even though the pastor there has said at one time, you have agreed to the event taking our debate team on television with a man who would do more harm than good to the cause of Jesus Christ. I do not believe it is best to debate, uh, best interest of the debate team of the university to get that kind of publicity. Well, you know, that's an amazing thing to me. If you get any newspaper in the nation today, you will hear how controversial uh, Jerry Farwell was. He was always involved in promoting his belief and actually putting down the beliefs that were contrary to his. Oh, but that's not in the best interest of the university to get this kind of publicity with a guy like me who does the same thing. Dr. Johnny Robertson, I didn't call myself doctor, he did. Dr. Johnny Robertson is known throughout Martinsville, at least among Christians, as a man who wants to fight about the Bible, not just discuss it. Is there any way there could be an official document from the university debate department saying that this guy sent to this guy so that they will get the point? Matthew Copeland, he signs it, Matthew Copeland. Matthew. I am not planning on debating him or even writing to him. He is telling lies about our team and university. It is impossible to answer him because he keeps twisting everything you attempt to say. Brett O'Donnell, debate team captain for Liberty University. Well, let me say this to Brett O'Donnell. As I've said several times, I will debate you all, and when you twist the scripture, I will demonstrate to the community that you're twisting it. You see, the, the thing that's going on here is the same thing that's going on with Benny Dodson from the United Pentecostal International. There is no benefit from these people debating me because when they do, I'm going to demonstrate that in fact they're not baptizing according to, even though Dr. Cantor says to do it, according to the scripture, the foundation of the scripture of the gospel of Jesus Christ, they're not baptizing according to the scripture and I will demonstrate that. And I doubt that you will see the day when they will come on with me because, in fact, there is no way. Look at this. It is impossible to answer Johnny Robertson. The hymn there applies to me. And you know what? I agree. It is impossible for Liberty University, and I hope some of you po folks who are graduate Liberty University are listening tonight. It is impossible for Liberty University to answer me because they say I'm twisting everything you attempt to say. Well, wait a minute. You mean to tell me this guy is putting out speech writers for the candidates for the, for the President of the United States and they're tutoring the governor of the state of Virginia and they can't stop my twisting? You know what? I would never admit that. These guys are up at the top and they just admitted. Now, you're reading this, friends. If this is a lie, if I, if I didn't have this email, they could sue me for slander. Not only do I have this email, I actually have a correspondent from this station on live uh, 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 telephone conversation with Brett O'Donnell in which he did say that he was willing to debate me at Liberty University. But now he's telling one of his students, well, you know what, you can't answer this guy. It's impossible to answer him. Well, you know what? That's the same thing that the Phelps are saying. That's why the Phelps won't debate me again. 
is because when we put God's Word up against their doctrine, it is demonstrated to the degree it's too much of a demonstration for them to handle. You see, it doesn't benefit them. Because what actually happens is when you have a debate with the Church of Christ, a gospel preacher in the Church of Christ, here's what you get. You get too much time spent on this kind, <clears throat> this kind of thing right here, the Bible. My friends, tonight, I've been waiting for two hours tonight for someone to call in and tell me that the Bible does not say that baptism is a work of God. I'm waiting. Get, let me have some Baptist preacher, some, some uh, graduate of Liberty University. I'd like for you to call up and dispute what we have shown, the Bible says tonight. If you want to have the body of the sins of flesh cut off, put off, then what you're going to have to do tonight is you're going to have to have the operation of God take place in baptism and you have to believe in it. And if you don't believe in it, guess what? It doesn't happen. And if you were baptized, now my friend that called in the first call tonight, he said that he was saved and didn't even know he had to be baptized. Well, what you actually said then is you were saved without having faith in the operation of God. And the Bible says that the way you are risen, the way your body of sins is cut off, is through the faith of the working of God it takes place in baptism. You see, friends, tonight, that's why Jesus said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. You have to believe that God just like he did with his son when he was buried, is willing to cut off the body of your sins of flesh. Now, he didn't cut off the body of the sins of Jesus' flesh, but Jesus was buried and God raised him from the dead. You have to be buried. And when you are, God is willing to cut off the body of the sins of the flesh. He is, he is willing to let you contact Jesus' blood, a washing of regeneration, a renewing of the Holy Ghost. Your mind is actually changed as a result of the information that you're getting from God. You may have thought that you could just live any way you wanted to, but when you read the gospel of Jesus Christ, you found out that there's eternal damnation to those who do not obey Jesus Christ. When you listened to that message and submitted yourself unto that message, which is originating from the Holy Spirit, that is the renewing of your mind that he's talking about, the renewing of the Holy Spirit. And when you're willing to submit yourself to that, trusting in the working of God, you know what, friends? The Bible says that you will be raised to walk in newness of life. If we've been planted together in the likeness of His death, we'll be in the likeness of His resurrection. And friends, that is a work from heaven, not a work from God. We're out of time tonight. We appreciate you for being at 276-806-2150. My email address is BibleSays81 at Hotmail.com. And you can get on my website, and you can tell a friend about this broadcast tonight. All of the things we discussed tonight, I'm going to put it up on my website. What does the Bible say? TV. What does the Bible say? TV.com. And you'll be able to see the things that we have discussed. I actually assemble with the Church of Christ on 823 Starling Avenue on Sundays at... Um, at two different times. They're not down there. You can't see it. 9 a.m., 10 a.m., and 11 a.m. And we have Bible class 7 p.m. on Wednesday night. Normally, I am actually on Sunday night at uh, 9 p.m. on this same broadcast station. So we want you to be with us. Now remember, friends, we want you to remember our tent meeting. Our tent meeting is going to be at the intersection of 57 West and Blackberry Road in Bassett, Virginia, June 3rd through the 15th at 7 p.m. Bring a friend. John Shannon will be there. We're going to be knocking all the doors in Bassett. We're going to be asking this question. Is it the case that Billy Graham is right when he says any church will do? Or is it the case that we're telling you what Jesus said? All I said, Jesus said, is the church of Christ. I always want you to ask for, what does the Bible say? God bless.